No. Well, I would say Happy Friday, but it's not exactly a very exciting Friday for me today. Rosie, I'm going to warn you, she's on high alert and she is going nee -nee -nee -nee. anything that flies by, passes by, walks by, and I just can't stop her. <laughs> I've got an ocular migraine happening at the minute. This eye's going nee -nee -nee -nee. if you've ever had one, you know what it's like. Your vision is very much disturbed and like kind of one eye is blanked out. But I've taken my pills and I thought, oh, if I wait while it passes, you may not get a video at all. So here goes. We shall battle our way through it, yeah. Anyway, I've got another cardigan to show you. I started this before I went for my hand operation, but I had to stop because I could not crochet, yeah. It's... Um, if you want some other pattern, I can't tell you because I got it off uh, YouTube. It's just a top-down granny cardigan. There's like a million of them on YouTube if you have a good look round. So it isn't a printed paper pattern that I can show you Yeah. What I did was I carried one strand of navy blue all the way through and I used up the mini skeins that I had. Some came from Daniel, you know, Paul Play Yarns. Some were what I already had in stash, so I don't know whether you can see it up close and personal, but, whoops, oh gosh, I never point my camera in the right direction, do I? But that's what it is. All the way through it, it's got one strand of navy blue and um, one strand each of the bright colours. I mean, I've made many of these cardigans. I've usually used a double knit, which is a three weight if you're in America and done one row of each but this one was slightly different because I had to hold two strands together and uh, I got as far as doing the back two fronts and part way down the sleeve and had to stop because I went in fan surgery so anyway I managed to finish it off with a great deal of struggling because crocheting is still affecting my hands somewhat yeah uh, I'm still doing my knitting. I'm still knitting the honeycomb sweater. Um, I haven't brought it in to show you. Because I've done the back and part way up the front. Yeah. So I will show you when I get a little bit more advanced, <laughs> as they say. Well, if you want to know what I'm wearing today, I cannot help you with the pattern. Because I made this cardigan with... Lister's caftan, it was called. It was a fluffy iron, but over the years it's lost its fluff, yeah. The pattern was of the same vintage. It, I made it when I still had the shop, so we are going back one heck of a long time. Once again, I say to you, if you use decent yarn and you make your own clothes, unless you get bored with them or fed up with them or whatever, they last for you can't wear the things out, can you? So this is the pattern. I'm sure you can find this kind of stitch on something else. It's a raglan sleeve because a lot of the patterns back in the way day were raglan. And I'm wearing it with a, a shine dress or whatever you want to call it, a shine dress. Some of the designs are lovely but the fabrics are pretty rubbish, yeah. And um, it's a... I can never do the full length twirl, can I? It's a full length one anyway. Done in tiers, you know, like three tiers going downward, yeah. So I'm wearing that with a, a necklace that's one of my, oh, one of my favourites that I've had for quite a while. I'll lower the camera down a little bit. Had it quite some time, this one. Oh, hello. Got Trixie. <laughs> Trixie's come to see me. We are on our own today, aren't we, Trixabel? Yes. Well, we're not because we've got Parky Rosie. Um, my son's gone to Munich for a couple of days with the lads and uh, my daughter-in-law's gone to Manchester so it's just me and the critters as they say and uh, she wants to come up behind me. There's no room sweetie pie because I've got me cushions. Oh god. She likes to sit behind me. Come on then get up here. Come on up. Up. That's it. She likes to be like a backrest for me. I don't know whether it's the warmth or what it is, but that's where she likes to be, yeah. 
I have turned the notifications off on the camera, so on the camera, on my phone, so you shouldn't be hearing it go beepity 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 beep like it normally does. What have I got to say to you? Well, um, what did I do since I, when did I speak to you last? Tuesday I actually spoke to you last, although the video came out on Wednesday, didn't it? Yeah. Wednesday I went to the two knit clubs. I went down to Cleveland, which was a, actually a nice day. The fishermen were out fishing. I never think to take my camera, never think to take it. I mean, I've told you before, my scooter is very, very noisy, so it cancels out my talking to it. And I'm not posh, I haven't got one of those noise cancelling microphones you wear around your neck or anything like that. So if I'm going along with the scooter, the scooter's going squeakity squeak, you know, clatter clatter, all that jazz. So when I get back home and try to upload the video, the count, you know, the PC goes, no, no, I don't like it, don't want it. YouTube goes, no, 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 I don't like it, don't like it. Anyway, it was quite crowded in Cleveland, which is a change from Fleetwood because Fleetwood never is. Um, so I went to the Nick Club, um, just spent some time chatting to my friends down there. Came back, had a little bit of um, a little bit of tea because my IBS was having one of its days. I know a lot of you suffer from it, so I don't need to go into detail, but it was having one of its days. So I didn't really feel like eating much. So I think I just had a little bit of something. No, I had a little bit of something when I came back from the second knit club, which was in the evening, so I went there. So nice to be able to go there and back in daylight, yeah? Without having to trundle my way through. I mean, this scooter isn't too bad. It does have a light, you know, that shines dimly. <laughs> very dimly it's like a little one watt torch uh, so you can actually make your way you can see a pothole in front of you let's just say but you can't see much else it's like traveling in the dark with a little teeny torch yeah? so it's nice when it's daylight when I'm coming back and I can actually see my way home yeah so I had a bit of something to eat when I came in Thursday yesterday I went to the cafe with my friends Again, my IBS was kicking my backside, so I just, I had fish and chips, but I actually didn't eat the batter on the fish. I just ate the fish in the middle. And some of the mushy peas, if, you don't, if you're in the UK, you know what mushy peas are. If you're in the US, I'm not sure if you do. But they're sort of like mushed up peas in juice. <laughs> Sounds revolting, but they're quite nice. It's a delicacy from where I live. I think one restaurant calls them Manchester caviar. Wouldn't quite describe them like that, but I like my mushy peas. So I had a few chips, but not much. I mean, in fact, you couldn't tell anybody you'd eaten much off my plate because there was a big pile of the batter, because I didn't eat the batter. I thought that's one step too far when you've got IBS. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we came back from there and we decided we'd call it the Comfy Cafe. We've got the cafe that has the nice food, but the uncomfortable chairs, which is the Ferry Cafe in Fleetwood. Food's okay. For anybody who's not got IBS, food's okay. Chairs, not so. Dining chairs, very uncomfortable. Play havoc with me back. So we decided we'd go to the Comfy Cafe, which was down by the Marine Hall, near where Princess Anne went. So we sat in the comfy seats, and I just had... What did I, oh, I had an ice cream, yeah. I actually had an ice cream. And, um, oh no, I didn't. I meant to have an ice cream. I had a milkshake, banana milkshake, which was dicing with death, really, because they use cow's milk. <laughs> We're back on the subject of the IBS. But, I, you know, all was well. I managed to get home okay. And today, of course, I've got the doggies, I've got one behind me here, actually as a backrest, and uh, the other one, who was given a treat this morning by her mum, my daughter-in-law, but proceeded to go outside and throw up everywhere, so <laughs> I don't think it agreed with her, so I took it off her and put it somewhere else. Her treat is in the middle of my bed, thank you very much, Trixabelle. 
I've now got a treat. One of those bum things. A treat in the middle of my bed. Mm -hmm. So, I've got rid of one of my mannequin torsos. My friend who was trying to sell some things that her daughters have left behind and don't want anymore. And she was trying to display them and they weren't looking good, looking flat, you know. And so she said, you know, can I bought I said, you can have the, don't want the mannequin back. I'm trying to get rid of things out of the shed, not bring things in. I do miss my Paris, my tall mannequin. She made my crochet look so good, yeah. And as you know, I am still going to be bombarding everybody with pictures of my crochet saying, please buy. I still have a little bit of yarn left on eBay. Not much. Most of it has got bids on it. I may look some more out, but um, I'm still, jury's still out on that. I don't have that Maria Kondo thing where you look at something and think, I don't like it. I don't have that when it comes to yarn. I have that, oh, that would make something. That would make a nice sweater. Oh, that would make a nice cardigan. <laughs> that is my attitude, even though I know I physically got too much yarn. Did I really say that out loud? I really do have too much yarn. Considering my age and how long my projected lifespan is going to be, <laughs> I would definitely have to live past a hundred to crochet on it anything that's left in the shed. Yeah. Plus I've got a lot of half finished things, not crochet or knitted really. I've got to do the sewing up of the hems, I think I've told you, the trouser legs are too long. All my dresses are, I'm shrinking, so all my dresses are too long now and I'm tripping over the end of them and all that. So, you know, that's what it's all about. Today is reasonably warm for a change, you know. I did actually spend about five minutes out in the garden. But maybe that was why I got the ocular migraine, because the sun was shining. You know, such a rare event here. I'm like, oh, what's that yellow thing in the sky? Oh, is it sunshine? So I've actually got a bath towel out, <laughs> drying on the line. Well, the rotary dryer. Don't like that thing. I like a good old-fashioned washing line that stretches across the garden and decapitates my son every time he walks out because he moans like mad. So we have a little roundabout. I don't like them. To me, nothing dries. You know the things you put in the middle? You know, you put your little things in the middle, don't you? Your underwear. And that never dries. So I've got my airer up in this room here. I've got the airer up. Try to dry a few bits and bobs here. And uh, we'll see how we go with that. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know what you want me to say, really. It's going to be a short video because I'm running out of things to say. I was going to go to a, a rag thing tomorrow, which was where people take fabric and that and have a tabletop sale. But the friend who was taking me wanted me to go at nine o'clock in the morning and I'm like, oh, no, it's too early for me, with the dogs as well. And it was like supposed to be ten till four. Well, she may have wanted to stay later and as I was relying on her for a lift, I thought, no, no. Um, you know, they're having another one anyway in June, so maybe I'll go to that one. It's not like I sew or anything. I was only going to be sociable to have a little look round and see what was happening, you know. Can you hear her snoring? She stopped now. Because I said, can you hear her snoring? She's actually stopped. But um, I was only going to like for a nosy. Just to get out and about, really, you know, in the sunshine. Or, <laughs> sunshine. <laughs> but, um, you know, I watch other people's videos and they've got the bright sunshine and say, oh, isn't it warm? And I'm like, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> I wear daily a great big padded jacket that I never wore in Manchester. My niece bought it for me one Christmas. And it was so hot, I never actually wore it. It's become my staple coat, my put-on-every-day coat. And, 
you know, it, it isn't me really because it's dark navy blue which isn't me at all. But she actually ordered it online and it was said it was purple, but he's never seen purple in a million years. It's navy blue. But, you know, you have to be warm, don't you? And I wear a scarf underneath it, which is ridiculous in May. Ridiculous. I should be wearing a shorty jacket or just a cardigan, you know. What is happening to our weather? The UK is in, oh, they keep promising us this heat wave. Met warning, heat wave coming. Yes, come on, bring it on, bring it on. Heat wave, where is it? Where are you? Bring it on. I've not seen it. They promised it me last year. I think we had about two days of it, where it was moderately heat wave. And everybody else is going, oh, isn't it hot down south? Isn't it hot down there? And I'm going, no, no, it's not hot here at all. Yeah. I've been watching the programme, you know, I ran out of programmes to watch, so I had to sort of start looking through what I hadn't watched. And I discovered a series called Shetland, which I hadn't watched any of them for some reason or other, so I started right at the beginning with them. Last night, the episode went on for six episodes. And because I'd invested in it, I couldn't stop. I thought, I want to know the end. So I watched like six episodes of it. So it was like two o'clock before I went to bed last night. But looking at that, I'm thinking, yes, I don't think I could live in the Shetland Isles. <laughs> or Fair Isle, as one of the they lived. It was dire weather and all sorts of stuff. But having said that, I've just read on um, Facebook and that that the flights to Skiathos have actually been cancelled for today because of bad weather. People are stuck on the island, they can't get off it and they can't get on it because it's a teeny, teeny little island anyway, Skiathos is in the Greek islands and the runway is scarily small. You know, it's a real white knuckle ride, don't look out the window when you're landing because it comes in so low <laughs> and you think, oh my God, it's not going to stop before it pops into the sea at the other end. As far as I know, touch wood, it's not happened. We have some brilliant pilots that managed to pull up in time. But it is a bit of a white knuckle ride if you go into Skiathos by plane, yeah. The first time we went to Skiathos was in the 80s and they didn't have um, an airport then. Um, they um, you got there by ferry. You went to, you landed in Athens. You had a, a long, long coach drive. And then you got on a ferry, went over to Skiathos. Yeah? That was the first time we ever went in the 80s. But now they've progressed, they've got hotels and it's absolutely grand. The place is so popular now. I would love, love to go back because I love the island. I really do. But it's very cobbly, cobblestones, which would be no good for me. I'd be on, on the floor in no time, flat. And also, if I took my little scooter, it would be worse than, <laughs> worse than Blackpool on a bad day. So it's in my dreams. And I do watch the videos about it and think, oh, what a lovely place. What I would love to go back. She's now grunty. <laughs> Sound effects from Trixabel. Yeah. At least Rosie hasn't barked yet. It must be all quiet on the street. She must be actually having a little sleep. Dare I say it? With bated breath. I have done absolutely nothing today, except I did my hair, which didn't take, because I've still got all the dark bits. The end bits have gone blonder, <laughs> but the dark roots never change. I need my niece to help me to do my roots because, you know, I do have very, very dark hair. I'm not a natural blonde, as you probably have gathered. And my roots are still extremely dark, which is very infuriating at my age group. I should be white by now. Why not? My mother was white by now. All of my aunties were white by now. My some of my cousins are white by now. But no, I stay resolutely dark. <sighs> Very annoying. Yeah. 
I want to be Paul Latin. I want to be May West, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> she said, hopefully. I'd need a heck of a lot of Botox to be any of those two, I think, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go now because I cannot think of anything else to say to you. I'm going to go back to my knitting. I've done the back and half of the front of the honeycomb knitting. I'm going to go back and do that. I've got a friend who wants me to make her one in white with turquoise. So I bought the white. I did. Well, that's another place I went to. I went to Naked Sheep. They did not have any white chunky. I don't know why people don't have white in things. I mean, I've heard other people say they've been waiting for things and they don't white doesn't get delivered. Well. How can you not get white? Uh, so I had to get a double knit, so I'm going to have to knit that double. Yeah, because there was all colours in the shed, of course, but you never have enough white and you never have enough black. I think they're mostly the colours I've had to buy since I've been here, unless somebody wanted a specific colour or I wanted a specific colour. But mostly it's been black and white I've had to order. After that, I've seen a hound's tooth. The actual cardigan I've seen isn't the style I want, but I just want to learn how to do the houndstooth in crochet. So that'll be another infuriating month for you. I'll be saying, yes, I know how to do the stitch, but I didn't follow a pattern. <laughs> you know me, I never follow patterns. Well, very rare. I did follow a pattern with this, but I can't tell you what it is because it's about 30 years old. There are patterns very, very well, the stitch pattern you'll find. If you have one of those stitch books, you know, that tells you, and you can just put it onto a plain cardigan, can't you? That's what I do. I used to use the same basic sweater pattern, same basic cardigan pattern, and add a different stitch to it. I do it all the time with crochet. You know, if you haven't got one, invest in one of those, you know, the crochet stitches where you've got like 50 different stitches or a hundred different stitches and the knit books are to the same just the stitches because basically that is what you need you can actually you know choose a basic pattern as long as you don't start sticking cables in and things that make your garment go in because you have to allow more stitches if you're doing a cable or anything like that or a rib pattern that pulls it in. But basically, by and large, you can actually stick a, a lacy pattern, something like that, on any basic pattern. You don't need to keep paying £10 for a pattern, although they would like you to. Etsy is a besom for that, isn't it? The older patterns, you can get the vintage ones for about two, three pounds, yeah. You want a new pattern these days. You have to part with about £10 of your hard-earned money. And then when you get it, it's badly written, usually, <laughs> with very poor instructions. Oh yes, it's got lots of pictures. It might be 24 pages long when you print it out. But does it give you good instructions? Sadly, no. no. I'm old-fashioned. I like the old-fashioned ones where it says continue in pattern till you get to the other ones. Decrease either side till you get to so many stitches. Mm, that is me. That, to me, is straightforward. I understand it. I do not understand when they tell you every single flipping row. Don't understand it. Yeah. It's the same with the tu tutorials. I was going to say tuition, but tutorials. When they say, this is the crochet hook. Look at the crochet hook. Isn't it a nice crochet hook? It's so... And then they get the ball of wool. Look at this one. It's this, it's that. And I'm like, get on with it. Get on with it. Then they show you every chain. I am doing a chain of 26 chains. There's one chain, there's two chains. And they go across the whole 26 chain. And then they go all the way across the row. And you're thinking, oh, get on with it. I know why they do it. It's if they're monetised. The video has to be a certain length. As for monetization, I've just given up. After Sheila and her debacle with the, the tax from the Southern Ireland and, oh, she's jumped through hoops trying to get to the bottom of what's going on. I've just given up. I never earned much anyway. 
I wasn't in it, I'm not making videos for the money, it's a good job isn't it, because I never get any. Well that's a lie, I get a little bit and they take a big bit off me in tax, so I just don't care anymore. I'm not going to argue the toss, you know, about it, I can't be bothered. I mean Sheila did, Sheila's gone into the ins and outs of it hasn't she, but I can't be bothered to be quite frank, I'm not in the frame of mind to do it. Anyway, I definitely am going, so happy Sat no, it's not Saturday, happy Friday. I will be on tomorrow, probably, for my live. Um, I won't be, I might be tired because they get me up at silly o'clock, these two, when I'm looking after them. Oh, can I get them to lie in? No. I do tend to go back in the chair and go, Vroom. in fact, I was trying to sleep this afternoon, have a little nan and nap, you know, little nod. Till Rosie was, wah, 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 wah. she won't be up, so maybe I'll go back, maybe I'll have another go, maybe I'll do some knitting, who knows what I will do next, even I don't know that. One of my subscribers did say, I should say, do the thumbs up, do the subscription, leave a comment at the beginning, and I forgot. Yeah, as usual. And here comes Rosie. So I think it is time to say bye-bye for now.